Hello everybody, Glorious Gaming back with another episode of NXT and 205 Live Results. And along with this episode, we'll be giving my, um, uh, my, uh, NXT TakeOver predictions and Backlash predictions. So, if you do like, please leave one and subscribe. But yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so this week's episode of NXT, I'll start out with Bobby Roop walking into Full Sail with his belt, and Luggage yelling at a lackey to speed it up as we fade into the opening theme. Then after the opening theme, we open up the show with Drew McIntyre defeating Sean Maluda because Sean Maluda never wins. I'm, s uh, man, I, I'm in love with, like, so many NXT and main roster people right now. Drew McIntyre is one of my favorites on NXT. Love love seeing him doing everything that he does. Can't wait until he gets an NXT title shot. And uh, until he gets moved to the main roster sometime. Don't know when, but he, he just destroyed Sean Maluda in this match. And he also opened up a gash beneath his left eye, I believe. And uh, I heard that was from a... WCPW match or just an indie match he had. It was like a barbed wire match that he had with someone. And uh yeah, so badass as always. Badass as always, Drew McIntyre wins. And can't wait to see where it goes from here. Then after that, Caleb Braxton catches McIntyre on the ramp to ask if he's concerned about Wesley Blake's attention. Drew McIntyre says he'd be more upset if no one paid attention to him. Uh, but if Blake wants to grab a piece of the spotlight, McIntyre will face him here next week on NXT. And after that, we get a recap of last week's main event between uh, Roderick Strong and Hideo Tommy and what happened after the match, which was Sandy's attack on Roderick Strong and then just furthering that food. Feud. Food. I must be so hungry, but feud. Then after the after the beatdown, uh, general manager William Regal, Regal, William Regal asked uh, Eric Young, "Oh, how are you?" Eric Young asked for a match, at, uh, or he said he wanted a uh, he wanted Sanity, or no, I think he said he just I I think he just said he wanted Eric Young, but yeah, so um. That put them in a match at TakeOver Chicago with uh, Roderick Strong taking on Eric Young. And uh, yeah, can't wait to see how that match plays out. Then, after that, got Tom Phillips, Percy Watson, and Nigel McGuinness discussing this Saturday night. Wait, oh, uh, discussing this Saturday night before kicking it to a video package reminding us of Hideo's Atomi debut back in 2014. And, yeah, then we get a, a um, promo about the uh, UK title match happening at TakeOver Chicago. Cannot wait to see that match. Uh, my opinion, Pete Dunne is going to win, but we'll get into that later uh, when I do my predictions. And after that, we get a teaser for the Velveteen Dream. Still don't know his name yet, but I will find out when he debuts. Then, uh, our next Tommy video showing uh, him hitting the go to sleep on Tyler Breeze at the San Jose before, oh, in San Jose before WrestleMania 31. Then after that, Watson informs us that Regal has officially booked Strong vs. Young for TakeOver. And, uh, yeah. Then after that, they hype up the one strip of threat match. Kicking it to an interview with Asuka. Didn't really like this segment because it made it seem like Asuka didn't care at all. And she was just saying, oh, next question, next question. And then the last question, she's like, when's the interview over? Then she left, then she's acting like, oh my gosh, my fans. And then when she left, she's like, I don't care. It's like, uh... Okay, that makes no sense, but whatever. Then after that, we get a match between Sonya Deville and Lacey Evans. 
Sonia Deville won, so I guess they're pushing her now. And if you don't know who Sonia Deville is, it is Daria Baronado. She's the MMA expert. But, uh, yeah, I wonder why they changed her name. And are they gonna give her a push? Don't know, but it seems like it. But she won with the Shining Lizard. And after that, we get a recap of Atami's return to confront Rude. Uh and hit him with the GTS. Then after that, we get Cassius Ono defeating Andrade Cien Almas via Pinnacle in a really good main event match. Uh enjoy the hell out of it. And uh yeah. Then after that we get McIntyre versus Blake and Alistair Black uh is in action. Uh will air next week, so that's on next week's episodes or episode of NXT, and, uh, yeah, the episode will be filmed before TakeOver. Then after that, we get another recap from the last week of Atami's win against Strong to earn the title shot. Then after that, Rude enters, run down, runs down Atami, says, you know, basically, oh, la la la, la la la, you know, stuff like that. And Atami came back, uh, came out. Security was trying to hold him down, uh, along with Regal. Tommy uh, swerved him, got in the ring. Uh, Rude got out after Otami hit a few punches on him. And then Otami hit a GTS on each of the security guards. And that's how we go out of, um, oh, wait, um, no. After that, um, Hideo was staring at the last security guard. Regal, or not Regal. <laughs> Rude tried to catch him off guard from tagging him behind. Hideo uh, got him up on his shoulders and hit a GGS to end that segment and end the night. And, uh, yeah. Pretty good episode of NXT. Uh, the stories being built over the past week, though, haven't been built the best for this takeover. I mean, it is the first takeover they added, you know, because they usually have one... For all the big four. But now they're adding a little bit more. So yeah. But I mean I'm still hyped for it. Still can't wait to see the matches. Next up is. What happened on 205 Live. Okay now it's time for 205 Live. Ah uh, well. To start out this week's episode. We get an opener. Of the highlights of last night's. Tag win. For Team Neville and TJP. And Neville's locker room uh, pep talk to his right-hand man, TJP. Uh, where he again promises him a title shot for winning tonight. Uh, open the show. So you get that to open the show. After that, we uh, get Dasha Fuentes interviewing Austin Aries. He says he knows that what Neville is up to and that the king is lying about that title shot to TJP. He vows to beat TJ tonight, even with his knee injury, because Perkins isn't on the A-double level. And after that, we go into the first match of the night, which was Noam Dar with the Leash Fox taking on and defeating Grandma the Leak. I haven't seen Grandma the Leak on TV in forever. Good to see him finally. Uh, did a, had a really good match with Noam Dar, and yeah. Uh, really, just really have to see, uh, Grandma to leak. I think they should push him more, you know, on TV, but guess no one likes him. But the winner of that match was Noam Dar with the Supernova Kick. And after that, we get a replay of last week's attack by the Brian Kendrick on Akira Tozawa. Leads to Tom Phillips and Corey Graves telling us they'll face each other in a street fight on next week's show. That should just be a backlash, Matt. Or wait, no, that's a that's a SmackDown pay per view. Never mind. But uh, yeah. So I can't wait to see how that uh, plays out between them. And after that, Dasha catches up with Kendrick, who says his knowledge and expertise makes him the favorite next week to win this street fight between him and Tazawa. He's disappointed. Because Tozawa hasn't learned from his lessons and instead is trying to please the fans. TBAK hopes 
TBK. If you didn't get that, hope Sakura got something from his teachings or he's in trouble for their street fight. After that, another video package telling us Alexander, Cedric Alexander will return. Or, well, we'll be back soon, but I think it's the next week. But, I could be wrong. But then, after that, we get Mustafa Ali taking on Tony Nese. This match never got underway because Drew Gulak attacked Mustafa before the match. Did some really nasty uh, bumps and moves on him. Threw him into the turnbuckle post. And, yeah. After that, we get Rich Swan uh, interview by Dasha. He says he's not worried about any plans Dar and Foxy have for him. And Delivery Man rolls up. Tries to give him a package, but Swan says it's for Arya Davari, that guy over there. And directs him down the hall. Davari walks away from the box, but when Jack Gallagher picks it up, Arya says, Hey, those are my million dollar sunglasses or whatever. He opens it, and it explodes in his face. Then, he just goes off in Arab, or whatever. Then after that, we get Austin Aries defeating TJP via submission. Ah, with the last chancery. Then, after that, we get a post-match nubble attacking, wrapping Aries' injured leg around the ring post, and locking in his own submission. Then after that, Gallagher comes out, helps Austin Aries out with, uh, or by taking out Neville, and, yeah. That's how the show ends. A uh, pretty good episode of 205 Live. Uh, some of these storylines, though, are feeling, like, really fatigued at this point. Like, I thought they'd be done with Rich Swan and Noah Dar and Alicia Fox by this point, but they're not. And, like, I know Ares is going to pick up the win at uh, Extreme Rules, but, you know, how long will this uh, storyline go? Who knows? Now? It's time for my predictions for both uh, NXT TakeOver Chicago and Backlash. Now it's time for my Backlash 2017 predictions. Okay, and we start off the show with uh, the kickoff show between Ty Dillinger and Aiden English. Ty Dillinger will win this. You want to know why? Because Ty Dillinger. My opinion, it's really sad to see where Ty Dillinger's went from, you know, being like really high in NXT to the pre-show of the main roster. Wish he was in the U.S. title picture, but nope. I, I'm telling you, he should have stayed in, uh, should have stayed in uh, NXT a little bit longer. So he could have won the NXT championship, uh, built his brand a little bit more, and yeah. But nope. Uh, yeah, my prediction for that is Ty Dillinger. Then after that, we get Luke Harper taking on Eric Rowan. Don't really care about this match, so Luke Harper. Because why would Eric Rowan win? Haven't seen him on TV for the past three months. So, yeah. Then after that, we get Sami Zayn taking on Baron Corbin. Why would Sami Zayn win? I don't know, but yeah. It's going to be Baron Corbin who wins and show off his dominance some more. And after that, we get the team of Charlotte, Naomi, and Becky Lynch taking on the welcoming committee. And from this match, a lot of things could happen. Uh, the first one being just the basic the welcoming committee win. Heels win. Yeah. Second thing is uh, Becky Lynch turning heel. On her teammates and joining the welcoming committee, which I think would be the best option. Or, uh, the third, Charlotte just turns heel and goes back to her usual ways. Because, in my opinion, she's not getting a better reaction as a face to where she, when she was a heel. So my prediction for that is Becky Lynch turns, uh, cost her team the match and joins the welcoming committee. Then after that, we get the SmackDown Tag Team Championships Tag Team Champion uh, match between the Usos and Breezango. I'm going to go all out here and say Breezango pick it up because 
they, you know, they could surprise us out of nowhere and have them win it. So I'm going to go with that. Brizango win it. Because, yeah, the Usos have showed way more passion on the mic ever since they're wearing N everything. But, I don't know. They're, like, I mean, they're doing great character work. And I'm glad they turned heel. But, I, I think Brizango will win. And after that, we have Shinsuke Nakamura taking on Dolph Ziggler. Shinsuke Nakamura will win this. Because why would Dolph? Don't know. But he won't. Shinsuke will. That's a lock for sure. Then after that, we have the match that should have been, or should be, the main event. Uh, and that is the U.S. title match between KO and AJ Styles. This is going to be a barn burner of a match. Can't wait to see it. My prediction is KO wins this time, but next time around, Styles will. Then, after that, we get the main event, which was, or which is, Randy Orton taking on Jinder Mahal for the WWE Championship. Randy Orton is going to win this, no doubt. I would like to see the title on Mahal, but they're not going to do it. So, Randy Orton will win. But yeah, those are my predictions for Backlash. I'm going to run them through again. Uh, Ty Dillinger versus Aiden English. Ty Dillinger. Eric versus Luke. Luke. Zayn versus Baron. Baron. Uh, Charlotte, Naomi, and Becky taking on the Welcoming Committee. Uh, welcoming Committee. Uh, Smackdown Tag. Breezango. Shinsuke versus Dolph. Shinsuke. U.S. title. Actually, I'm going to change my uh, pick on the U.S. title. I think it will be AJ, so my prediction is AJ Styles. And then for the WWE, Randy Orton. Now, that's it for my Backlash predictions. Now, my NXT TakeOver Chicago predictions. Okay, now it's time for my NXT TakeOver Chicago predictions. This, uh list that I'm looking at isn't in the order of the matches. Don't know what the order of the matches will be, but yeah, I'm just gonna go with it. Okay, so the first match we have on here is the NXT title match between Bobby Roode and Hideo Tommy. Uh, I don't think Hideo's picking it up uh, here. I think Bobby Roode is gonna retain it here, then defend it at the next, and then and then that's when Hideo will take it. Because Hideo, I think he's able to carry the title and everything and carry it on so Bobby can go on the SmackDown and Raw. But yeah, I don't think he's going to win it here. So uh, yeah, prediction for that is Bobby Roode. And after that, we get the NXT Women's Triple Threat match between Asuka, Ruby Riot, and Nikki Cross. Man. Oscar really needs to move up to Maine. And if they go through with the um, Becky turning heel on her team at Backlash, I could see Oscar losing the championship here to Ruby, and then Ruby losing it to Nikki. So my prediction here is going to be Ruby. Just going out there. And uh, yeah, so a prediction for the NXT Women's title match will be Ruby Riot. She'll walk out as champ. After that, we get the NXT Tag Team Title Ladder Match between the authors of Pain or AOP, taken on DIY. Authors of Pain are going to win here because they're big and muscular. And really, I don't see a reason why DIY needs to stay. I mean, they've had a tremendous run in NXT. I think they should just... Move to SmackDown or Raw, depending on where they put them, and then just go on from there because Heavy Machinery just deserves a title shot, in my opinion. Yeah, they might not be the best on the mic, but I mean, everyone loves them. So, yeah, but predictions for that is AOP. Then, after that, we have the WWE UK title match between... Tyler B 
eight N Pete Dunn. Uh huh. Pete Dunn's gonna win it. I I feel because uh, I'm not feeling Tyler Bate as like I used like I used to when he first came. But yeah, Pete Dunn. He's he's one of my favorite heels right now. And yeah, he'll he's just gonna be a way better champion than Tyler Bate, my opinion. But who knows? They could swerve it and have Tyler Bate win. But my prediction is Pete Dunn. And the new match that got added was Eric Young taking on Roderick Strong. Since this is their first meeting, Eric Young, because Roderick and Eric haven't met face to face one on one before. So yeah, Eric Young's gonna win. But uh, yeah, guys. So um, let me just run through those again. NXT title Bobby, NXT Women's Ruby, NXT Tag, AOP, WWE UK, Pete Dunne, and Eric versus Strong, Eric Young. But well, uh, yeah, guys, that's gonna be it for another episode. Or, well, another episodes of NXT and 5 Live Results and WWE Predictions. Hope you guys didn't join. I hope you guys didn't mind the big cluster of the two uh, shows into one. I actually kind of enjoyed it. So I think I might do this for, like, whenever NXT and uh, there's a pay-per-view after. I enjoy it more, but, yeah. But, um, yeah, guys, if you guys did like and you want to see more, please leave a like and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Snapchat. And if you want to see the rest of the series, please click the link down below or the annotation on the screen at the end of the video. As always, have a nice day. I'll see you all in the next one.